Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today we're going to be sewing block number five in our summer 2021 Sew With Me series. So I hope you guys are enjoying our series so far. Today we're on block number five. If you've missed out on any of the other blocks, I do have a playlist for the Sew With Me series um, below my channel. So just scroll down when you get on my channel and you'll see it. And then also if you missed it, I will put a link to the block number one episode so you can see that there and then just get started from block one and just get caught right back up. These blocks are super fun and easy and we're just going over traditional quilt blocks and today is one of my favorites. So today we're gonna be making this weather vane quilt block. This is a traditional quilt block. It is so much fun to make and as always I try and incorporate some kind of a new technique for you in all of my videos and so today we're going to be making all eight of these half square triangles in one fell swoop. It's eight half square triangles at a time. It's super fast and easy. Let's go ahead and get started. Today we're gonna do eight at a time half square triangles. It's gonna be so easy and I think you guys are really gonna like it. So go ahead and download the PDF instructions below this video and let's go ahead and get started but I will cover our fabric that really quickly. So we're gonna need one fabric for our center and that's gonna be a four and a half inch square. Then we're gonna need one background and one print for our star points and those are gonna be six and a half inches square each. We're gonna need four prints for the kind of weather vane portion those are all gonna be four and a half inches. And then we're gonna need some corner squares. Those are gonna be two and a half inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and set some of this stuff aside, including our middle. And we're gonna work on these eight at a time half square triangles. And so this is such a fun and easy technique. We're just gonna take our background fabric and flip it wrong side up. And we're gonna mark diagonal lines, corner to corner, one quarter an inch away from center on both diagonals. And so how we're gonna do that, I'm just gonna take my ruler, I'm gonna turn it so it's just a little bit easier for me here. I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna put my quarter of an inch line right on those points of my block right there. And then I'm going to draw a line. So just like that, that's one quarter of an inch away from center. And let's zoom in so you can see it a little bit better and we'll do the other side. So we're gonna flip our block over. And again, I'm just going to put my ruler so my quarter of an inch line is right on that corner point right there, and then I'm gonna draw a line. So we're basically just drawing a line one quarter of an inch away from center on both diagonals. And then we're just gonna flip our block and do that same thing on the other diagonals. Okay, so now we have these lines drawn and we're just gonna go ahead and take our other print and we're just gonna lay that right side up and then we're going to take our background print and lay that right side down on top. And then you can throw a couple of pins in here if you want to kind of just hold everything together just so it's not you know moving around on you. We're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew on all four lines. Now when I'm sewing, I'm just gonna sew just to the inside of the drawn line, just slightly to the inside. It's just gonna give us a little bit more room for our thread and the fold in our fabric when we press it open. So let's go ahead and sew. Okay, now we're gonna just turn around and go down the other side. Okay, so here's our block and you can kind of see we sewed both this way and this way. And now we're gonna trim this block up so that we end up with eight half square triangles. So it's really fancy how this works. So we're gonna cut it in half, both directions this way, and then we're gonna cut in half in between our stitch lines. So that's why those stitch lines need to be a quarter of an inch apart. And then I'm just gonna line up my ruler with those two center dots where those cross over, just make sure it looks nice and straight. Okay, and now I'm not gonna move my fabric. I'm actually going to turn my board. All right, so now we've got horizontal and vertical cuts. Now we're gonna do the diagonal cuts and I'm just gonna line that ruler up 
with the quarter of an inch line on one of my stitch lines and just cut those in half. And this one doesn't have to be as exact because uh, that'll be just in our seam allowance. And we're going to cut it diagonally this way as well. Okay, now the magic happens. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and half square triangles. So how fancy is that? So now we just need to press these. And I want to press towards the dark. So I'm just going to line these all up with my dark fabric up, facing up. And I'll put a couple over here. And first thing I'm going to do is just set these seams. This is going to help our uh, blocks lie a little bit flatter. And then I'm going to go ahead and press up towards the dark fabric on all of them. And I'm going to just kind of stack them as I go here. So I'm just going to grab them and press. And then I'm kind of just my irons kind of staying on the other ones as I go. So it just kind of helps keep them nice and hot. Just like that. And we'll kind of just let that set on there um, and cool for a second. And then we're going to square up those blocks. So now you're going to have some extra um, fabric on these. And I did that on purpose. I made them a little bit bigger so that if you got a little wonky on your stitches or anything like that, you can still get that perfect half square triangle. And I do that a lot. Even on certain patterns, if they call for, if I know I'm making these half square triangles, I will actually up the measurement, make it like this, and then be able to have some extra fabric to trim off. Okay, so now we have a perfect half square triangle. And I did that kind of quick, so let's do it a little bit closer. I'm using my 45 degree line on my ruler here. And I'm just making sure that line is right along my seam line. And then I'm going to just make sure that I've got fabric all the way around. I can see my two and a half inch mark here. That way I know that I'll just be cutting off about the same amount on all the sides. Okay, and there we go. We have another one. Let's go ahead and just set those up. Now I have before when in a hurry, put two together, kind of nesting those seams like that. And in that case, I do it basically the same way, but now I'm lining up this line on my ruler with my stitch line. So it's literally on top of my stitch line. Um, and then that way you can cut two at a time. Now, if I have time, I won't do it this way because sometimes you can get a little bit off on that underneath block and it's a little bit hard to see. But if you nest your seams really close to each other like that, you should have pretty perfect half square triangles. Okay, so we'll do the rest of them like that. So here are our eight half square triangles. That was super fast and easy. And now we can move on to our next step. So the square for our center is just done. We can just set that aside. That's ready to go. So next we're going to work on the weather vane kind of star tips that go on all four sides. So you're going to need four pieces of your whatever print color you want. And these are going to be four and a half inches square. Then you're going to need eight two and a half inch squares of your background fabric. And so if you would like, you can take your background fabric and just draw a line from corner to corner on the backs of all of them. I'm actually going to be using my quarter inch tape over on my machine, so I'll show you how to do that. But basically we're just going to snowball the top edge of this. So I'm going to go ahead and place one of them on here. I'm going to sew from corner to corner and then we'll trim a quarter of an inch away from our stitch line and press that open and then we'll add another one to this side and that'll give us our nice point. Now because I have four of them I'm actually going to bring all this over to my machine at one time and we're going to chain piece these. Now kind of like when we sewed our last ones we're going to stitch just on the outside edge of our line. I'm going to just take a stitch to kind of set that and then I can you know turn this to how I need it and I'm just going to line it up on my quarter of an inch line down here. So this point is just gonna stay right on that red line the whole way. So there is one, and I find it easier if I put this second one underneath. Now I'm not gonna mark on this one. 
I'm just gonna get it started and then make sure my point down here is lined up. Now, if you don't have this tape, and by the way, this is what the tape looks like. It's just quarter inch seam tape. It's kind of like a washi tape and it just peels right up. Doesn't leave any sticky residue on your uh, machine at all. So it's really nice. And it saves me from having to draw all those lines. So I always use that. And one more. Okay, so I've cut all four of these apart. Now before I trim off this excess, I'm actually gonna press them. I find that for some reason, whatever reason, I'm not sure why, but it actually is a little bit more accurate if I set this seam and then press it before I trim. And I've done this in some of my other videos as well. And I'm not sure if it's just because I can really line that up on there and kind of use that fabric that's already there as a guide, um, but I just like to do it this way, so. That's just what I do. Now we can go ahead and trim off one quarter of an inch away from that stitch line. And if you're careful, you can do more than one of these. Just make sure that you're folding your fabric back so you don't accidentally trim off the one you just sewed on. And these don't have to be perfect because this is just your seam allowance. So. and just cut them all off at once. So, super easy. Now we're going to take our um, this back over to our machine and we're gonna add one to the other side. We're just gonna put it right down like that. And I just line up this top corner with this fabric so I know it's nice and straight and then down here and we're gonna sew the opposite diagonal. And again, I'm gonna chain piece all of these. So let's take them over to our machine. Now you might be asking how I stitch just to the outside edge of a line that is non-existent. And I will say that um, I just kind of eyeball it and do my best. <laughs> so uh, if you are really wanting to be super accurate, you can draw a line. But if you'll notice, my tip is just to the left of that. just need to cut these apart again. Just be careful you don't cut your fabric. And again, I'm going to set my seam and just press that up. Now, like I said, if you would prefer, definitely draw that line, especially if you are just starting out. Uh, that line can be a really nice guide, especially when you're sewing corner to corner. I highly recommend that quarter inch um, tape because it's so helpful. And I pretty much just don't draw um, lines anymore. I'm just gonna do two at a time here. But it just saves so much time. Okay, so now we have our four kind of star points and I am gonna square these up because we want everything to be nice and square. So I'm just gonna put my ruler here. These need to be four and a half inches square. And this actually looks really good. I'm just gonna barely take off any there. You can kind of see that. But I am gonna just take the time, especially with these um, snowballed corners. Sometimes those corners can get a little bit wonky. It looks like I did relatively good here. And I do use this ruler to just scrape off those little bits. It's a little bit easier than doing it with your hand. Okay, now I can see I got off on this side, so I'll have to turn this one around here and do it from this side, just so I can get that piece. That way my square will be nice and accurate. So we're just gonna trim all these down to four and a half inches. This side looks okay. Okay. So here are our four weather vane kind of star points. So we can go ahead and place our star points aside. 
Next, we're gonna work on our corner units. So for that, you're gonna need two of your background squares and two of your half square triangles. So to assemble these, we're just gonna assemble them together like this, the top row and the bottom row, and then we'll come back and sew those rows together to create our unit. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this row, place it right side down onto the left row, and then I'm gonna sew using a one quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm not gonna cut my thread in between these. I'm gonna go ahead and chain stitch and I'm just gonna make them all while I'm over at my machine. So I'm gonna take our first two pieces here, place them right sides together, and you can pin these if you want, but I'm actually just gonna sew really fast. Okay, so that's row one. Then I'm gonna take row two again, place that right sides together. So that is my first one. So here's my row, and I know that row one and row two are one block. So I'm gonna leave these two joined and just cut right there. I'm gonna leave these two joined. I'm gonna leave these two joined, and then these two joined. So now I know that I've got one, two, three, four blocks. So next we're gonna open these up and sew them together, but before we do that, I wanna press them so my seams are nesting. So I'm going to take this block, and if you'll notice, both of these opposing squares don't have any seams on them. So it's gonna be really easy to press toward that direction, which means I'm pressing opposite directions, which means my seams will nest. So I'm just gonna take these over here, and I'm just gonna press that top row to the right, and the bottom row to the left. I'll just get those out of the way. I'm gonna do that on all these and I'll set them up the way I'm going to press. So I'll just set those seams and then I know I'm gonna lift this one and go that way. And then I'm gonna lift this one and go this way. I'm gonna go that way. And then I'm gonna go this way. So next we're gonna just take these and sew these two rows together. So I'm just gonna flip this down like that and I'm gonna nest this seam. So here's kind of what it looks like and you can see that those seams are going opposite directions. That's what it means when we talk about nesting our seams. And so I'm going to go ahead and just pin in one side and out the other. And you can pin your edges if you like. I don't do that, um, I just kind of Try and keep my pinning to a minimum, but you can do whatever you're more comfortable with. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of these at once and then we'll sew them all at once. The other thing pinning this seam will do is it lets me know that that's the side I'm going to sew on. So if I flip this over, it would be really easy when I got to my machine to accidentally sew on the wrong side. So that pin just not only holds my seam in place, but it also lets me know, hey, that's the side you're sewing on. So. So just a little helpful tip for you. Okay, all right, so now we have all four of these. We can take those over to our machine and sew one quarter of an inch down all our pinned sides. And here are our four blocks. So now we can just trim those apart and press. For this part, we're not really matching up any seams, so it doesn't actually matter which way you press them. So I'm just going to pick away. It's not gonna matter. You can also press these seams open if you want. Uh, whatever you are more comfortable with and you prefer. Um, these little half square triangles can have a little bit of a, I don't know, a little bit of a bulk right here where the seams uh, nest, so you can uh, twist the seams open. I've never been very good at that, so I mean, I feel like this works just fine. I'll just set that there for a second. Now while those are cooling, we can go ahead and start laying out the rest of our block. So I'm gonna grab my center point right here, put it in the middle, and then we can add our weather vanes to the side, just like this. And then we can add our squares. Now before I do that, I do want to just square up these blocks and make sure that they're okay. So I'm gonna just scoot that out of the way and just take a quick look at these. 
forgot to do that before I laid that all out. And I just want these to be four and a half inches square and they look pretty good. Sorry, hopefully you can see on this white cutting board, but I do wanna just take a minute and square these blocks up. It's gonna be worth it in the long run. Okay, that looks perfect. Okay, now we can bring our block back down and set these out. So I'm gonna be putting them this way with my background color up in the corner and then my kind of secondary accent fabric towards the center. Now traditional weather vanes would have all three of these prints be the same. I just wanted to make mine a little scrappy and I just kind of liked the look of having it be different, but you can totally do, this is your block, you can do whatever you want on that. You can even have scrappy outer pieces. It's totally up to you. So let's go ahead and sew this block together. We're gonna sew rows one, two, and three together. And then we're gonna press opposite directions so that our seams will nest just like we did this block. And then we'll sew the rows together um, this way. So in order to do that so that nothing gets messed up, I'm going to place my second row on top of my first row right sides together. Just wanna make sure everything is going the right way. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and pin on this side. Um, you don't have to. I'm going to because once I get this over to my machine, it reminds me which row we're stitching down and then it just also kind of holds my stuff together. So one quarter of an inch down this edge, I'm not gonna cut my threads in between my rows. Okay, so here are our rows and then we can just open these up. Again, I'm just gonna leave them attached. You can uh, cut them apart if you like. I like to just leave everything attached. Now we're going to just lay this second, the third row over onto our middle row. And again, I just like to just uh, assemble them this way. That way I have less of a chance of, you know, flipping something. Uh, sewing it the wrong direction and that kind of thing. And we don't have any seams to really worry about lining up, so I'm just making sure that they look like they're lined up along this edge and the top and bottom. And then I'll just take this to my machine, again, sew a quarter of an inch all the way down. So here's our block, and now we're just going to press. Now we can figure out which way we want this to go. And I like to kind of let my fabric be my guide here. This middle row can go either direction because there's no seams on any of it. Um, and my fabric seems to be wanting to go in on these top and bottom rows. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna tug on it just a little bit down here just so that I don't get any extra folds over there. And I'm gonna press this seam in. That means I'm gonna press this next seam out And then I'm gonna press this next seam in, and I did forget to kind of set those seams, but it's not gonna be the end of the world. And then we're gonna do the same thing down here. In, out. And I do switch hands so I can kind of tug on the opposite side, in. Okay, and now we're gonna nest our seams just like we did on the small blocks. So I'm just gonna flip this top one down I'm gonna just nest these seams and go ahead and pin right there. I always pin at my nested seams. Um, like I said, it helps me know which row, which side of my block I'm sewing on. Just also kind of helps keep things in order. And then I will go ahead and just pin this far edge just to kind of keep things straight. Then I'll take this to my machine. We'll sew a quarter of an inch down this edge. Okay, and I am going to press this one. It's going to be easier to press towards the inside. So whichever way I'm pressing, I put that up, up on my table. That way I can set it and then just kind of flip it back. And then I'll just leave it for a second. And then we're going to do the same thing. We'll just flip this edge over. Again, I'm going to nest those seams and pin them in place. And so one quarter of an inch. Okay, and again, I'm gonna press towards the center. So I'm gonna set that seam and then just press it up. 
Okay, and here we have our block. Now we just need to trim it up, and that's what I use my little 12 and a half inch for, and like you've seen on my other blocks, I always square up my completed blocks to the best of my ability. Um, and I do try and make sure my little star points are one quarter of an inch away from the edge. This one's a little bit close. And if you have a hard time cutting different directions, you're not really supposed to do that. Um, you can just certainly take this whole thing, turn it around, and you know trim it that way so that you're staying safe. Okay, so here's how much I trimmed off. Not very much, but that will make a difference with our completed quilt. And here is our finished weather vane block. I think it's super cute. And you can really do a lot with the colors on this block, like I said, um, changing the background color to your more dominant print and then doing these insides as a lighter print will give it a whole new look. And then like I mentioned, I did different um, fabric right here for these little corner stones. Um, traditionally, this would all be one fabric but i think it just turned out super cute and scrappy and i love it all right guys so that's going to be it for today's block again this is the weather vane block a fun traditional quilt block to make i hope you guys enjoyed this video i had a lot of fun making it and as you can see i just made it super scrappy and lots of fun as always if you like this video please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe that way i know to keep making them for you and don't forget to hit the notification bell that way you'll be notified anytime one of my videos comes out and you won't miss out on any of the fun thank you so much for joining me for today's so with me episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.